I'm not even gonna pretend like I know the rest of that solo. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Welcome to five guitar riffs that every beginner should know. Now, there's all kinds of these videos and they kind of just like throw riffs out there because they're easy. And um, that's not really what I wanna do. I wanna give you five riffs and really explain why I think they're so important to a beginner to learn. Now, if you would like tabs for this lesson, they are over on my website. If you wanna support the channel, just hook it up with a share or a thumbs up. Uh, there's lesson packs on the website that you can purchase if you're interested in those. But other than that, we are just going to cut the talking and get straight to the rocking. Less talk, more rock is what I always say. So let's go ahead and get to it. Alright, so before we get going, uh, real quick, you will not be hearing Smoke on the Water. You won't be hearing Iron Man. Uh, those are all amazing, great, you know, beginner riffs. Uh, but they're in everybody's, you know, five must-learn riffs or whatever. And, uh, you know, I just don't, I don't want those in this one. So we're going to do some different riffs. Now, the first riff we're going to do is Rocky Like a Hurricane. If you don't know it, it goes like this. It's that solo I attempted to play in the beginning, uh, but then realized halfway through it, I don't know the whole solo. <laughs> so uh, why is this one such a good one? For one, it's easy to play. And it's just one of those like rock anthems. Most of you have probably heard this song before, whether it's on Guitar Hero or just heard it on the radio, stuff like that. Now, um, it has power chords and it has them moving around. So it's not like you're just sitting there taking one finger and holding down the strings. You actually do have to move around. So it's kind of getting your finger sliding around and uh, you're doing power chords, which is kind of like a, a rock guitar player's best friend. So what we're doing is we're doing an E5 power chord, which is just seven on the A and then uh, nine on the D, you play it three times. Now you want to kind of slide that down. What, what I do is it slides my hand in the direction I need to go. So then I'm going to go to a G5, which is third fret low E, fifth fret on the A. So, so then we move up two frets, five and seven. Then you're going to go to a C5, which is third fret on the A and fifth fret on the D. Play that one once and you move up to a D5. So you just move up two frets. And, and what else this thing is showing us is this little box shape. You're going to see a lot of this in rock music. So it's kind of, uh, you know, just almost like imprinting these things early on when you're playing. And you'll start recognizing these. And before you know it, you'll be able to play all kinds of riffs. So. so riff number two is here for you. And this is, uh, you know, probably one of the most famous guitar riffs ever. Uh, and this, in, in my opinion, is uh, is Crazy Train. Now, this is almost like a two-for-one special because if you can't play this first riff, you can play the riff behind it. I'm not going to cover that one, but it's a really easy power chord riff. Uh, so we're going to do this one. Now, there's a lot of stuff that you can learn from this one. Let's cover the notes and we'll go, you know, dive a little bit more into it. So I'm just going to play 2nd fret on the low string twice. Then I go to 4th fret on the A. Then I go back to 2nd fret. 5th fret. Back to 2nd. Back to 4th. So. It's like the first half of the riff. Then all you do is move to go down to 2nd fret on the A. And you're going to go 5, 4, 5. And you go back to that 2 on the A. And you're going to go 5, 4, open on the low. Now those are your notes. There's um, certainly a different delivery going on here. Now I like to mute the low E string. If you're not familiar with muting, it's actually taking this part of your hand and putting it on the strings. We're not going to dive too much into this stuff. But some key points I want you to focus on is the fact that I'm muting that low E string and I'm using my ring finger and pinky. That's how I'm picking it as well. Now when I mute, I'm using some downs and some alternate picking. Uh, I would try to alternate pick it all and just make sure you use your ring finger and your pinky. I wasn't flipping off the camera. I was telling you what fingers to use. So riff number three, what could it be? I'm telling you what, if this is your first video you're watching, I rhyme all the time. No, we're gonna do Thunderstruck. Now, this one is awesome for being an exercise. You can just sit there while you're watching TV. Just doing that, you're actually doing a little arpeggio. Uh, Angus a lot of times will do it without picking, but for now, don't worry about that, that's hammer-ons and pull-offs. Uh, we are not focused on that stuff right now. 
So what, what you're going to be doing is just going to be going open on the B, and 4th fret on the B, open again, and 5th fret. Notice two things here that I really want you to focus on. For one, I want you to go slow, make sure that the notes are all clean. Um, practice both clean and distorted. A lot of people would tell you don't use distortion, don't listen to them. Use distortion. If you practice clean all the time, um, yeah, like a clean setting is what I'm talking about for tone, and you don't practice with distortion, you throw distortion on there and you're going to get all kinds of noise. Don't do that. Practice with both. Um, I'm using my pointer finger and pinky finger. Definitely use those two fingers. And I'm alternate picking it all right now. Now later you can do hand runs and pull offs or kind of like a combo. If you want. For now, alternate pick it all. So that's the first one. Sorry, I know I'm kind of blabbing on this one, but this is a really important one. And all you're going to do is move up to open 5, open 8. That's all we're going to cover that one. The next part is a little bit more difficult. But as far as a whole song, this one has tons of great riffs that you could learn. Here we are, number four. Now this one we are going to be working on is a Beatles classic of Day Tripper. And why are we doing this one? Well, for one, the riff itself has this really good groove swing to it. And, uh, you know, rhythm is so important, it's so overlooked. Take it from a person who didn't learn his chords for months when he started playing guitar, and it really came back to haunt me. So um, I always wanted to put a big focus on rhythm playing. And the shuffle that you're getting, this is kind of based off of, you are going to hear in all kinds of stuff. Hair of the Dog by Nazareth, even, even Beat It by Michael Jackson, they all have this shuffle in here and, and so many other songs. And it's going to go like this. <laughs> Now, right away from the get-go, right away, there's already an important lesson happening here. Listen how far apart those first two notes are. There's a big pause there. Not playing stuff is tough. So it goes like this. It's... Okay? So you're playing open low E string. There's some space there. Then you're going to go three, four on the low E. Then you go to two on the A, two on the D. Now I'm rolling my pointer finger, so I'm covering both those strings with just my index finger. Go to open string. Then you're gonna go to two on the A, four on the D, back to that two on the A, and then open D, and then second round of D. So to really just have something um, inspiring to watch. Look up Tommy Emanuel. He does a really cool kind of... I, can't, I obviously can't play it. Alright, so on to riff number five, even though I wrote six down and numbered incorrectly. Eh, you know, I never said math was my strong point. Uh, now, this is another uh, just great song that was such a cool moment for me to learn this one because I like the band so much, uh, Boston. Um, and basically it's more than a feeling. Now the reason I picked this one, I actually had Back in Black and Boston picked. I want to go with Boston because it has chords in it. Um, everything else that we've done have had power chords, but they're, they're kind of not chords. They are, but they're not. So the one we're going to be doing is More Than a Feeling, of course, which goes like this. <laughs> I kind of have a lot of distortion. It's a very nice, clean acoustic sound, but um, I'm, I'm just going to kind of roll my volume down a little bit. So what is happening here? I'm gonna I'm gonna call out some chord names, but we don't have so much focus on that right now. It's just I want you to get used to playing these chord shapes. So the first one we're gonna be playing, basically, if you know how to play your D major chord, you're almost set. We're gonna do a D sus four. So you want 
open D, second fret on the G, third fret on the B, and third fret high E. Now you actually want to put your middle finger down to second fret on the high E string, that way it's ready to go because we're going to have to play that high E string and then pick it up and go straight from three to two. And this is all about preparation, getting your fingers ready for what they're about to play. Okay, so we're going to play an open D string, then you're going to go to simply uh, the B, should be third fret, then to the G, then the high string, which should be third fret, then you're going to play that high string again, which would be second fret. Okay, so we have. After that, you go back to the B and back to the G. I'm trying to get the right setting on my guitar. This is just simply third fret on the low E string. It's almost like a C9 chord. Then open G, and third fret on the B. Okay, just these two fingers. Now you simply pick up your middle finger and put your pointer finger down on second fret of the A. Put the A string open. And open G to the B. So you're still holding down that third fret. We go to third fret low E string and open G. And you're home free. Now I'm muting it. You don't have to mute it right now. I'm just muting it because I have so much distortion uh, kind of going on. But so those are five riffs that are so important because they teach you so many different things that you might not even realize that you're learning when you're learning something like that. So it's kind of like it's like a smoothie, man. You're putting all kinds of vegetables in there, but you mix it with that fruit, and it's tasting sweet. Okay, that'll wrap it up for us here today. Hope you guys liked that lesson. Like I said, these are five riffs that are just so iconic, uh, and they're just fun to play. So if you guys would, hit that subscribe button. You can share the video, like it, uh, tabs, like I said, down below. And these riffs are just so fun because they're, they, people know what they are right away. And as a beginner, it's so inspiring when someone recognizes what you're playing. So make sure you check that stuff out. Lots of other videos. I have some videos linked down below to the sides. Or maybe, maybe it's my face. I don't know. So I'll see you guys later. Hands up for a high five. Coming in hot. Later, guys.